every now and again, I'll see people in the Arsenal Discord and in the YouTube comments say, how do I get better at Arsenal? If you said that in the Discord, you'd probably get this answer, play the game. But that is easier said than done. And if you're on YouTube comments asking how do you get better at Arsenal, well, a simple YouTube search would answer that problem as many YouTubers have shown how to play Arsenal. It's the usual find FOV and sensitivity that's good for you. Learn the spawn points and on maps. Learn the strafe at the right times, etc. Now, let's take that second one about the maps and expand. How can you use a map to your advantage? to secure a win. Arsenal, as we all know, is a fast-paced arcade shooter and spawns can change rapidly, so game sense and map knowledge are extremely important for rotating around effectively, outsmarting your opponents, and securing that win. To go over these maps, we'll be going in alphabetical order. By the time you're watching this, some maps may be revamped, deleted, or are still here. But we aren't gonna talk about Ruins though, that's a bad map, they should just, just, just remove it already, god damn. Season maps will not be here, but I may do a second part for maps that get thrown in and out of rotation. So subscribe if you enjoy this one by the end and want to see a second part. So here is how you can up your arsenal. Aircraft is a map released in the Summer Update 2019. This map takes place on an aircraft carrier filled with shipping containers parked next to an island with a volcano. Fights in this map are often crammed and spawn killing can occur here other than to get away from a spawn kill, using the back end inside of the aircraft to get around are feasible, but don't try to use it to rotate around often, as you are less likely to find people. If you play this game for a bit, there are a few movement techniques you can do to get the high ground, but leave you exposed to enemies, so this is where you should be aware of your surroundings and develop good game sense as you play the map, and every map for that matter. I'll also be adding in tips to help you secure that win with the golden knife. Now is when you can use the back of the map, plus the edge of the aircraft to flank behind and get a kill to end the game. You might even be lucky to run with your teammates and snag a kill on someone who is low health. This applies to all maps mentioned too. Wherever your teammates are, the enemy is most likely not. Agency is a map originally from Counter-Strike Global Offensive as a hostage map. It takes place in a commercial penthouse on top of a skyscraper. The interior is a two-floor office. The first floor has a giant open lobby with stairs leading up to the second floor, along with two hallways leading around to a small cafeteria and a large space. Said large space is overlooked by a balcony. On the outside, falling off the map does count as a demotion, and you will lose a level. This map, without a doubt, is here to stay. It is CQC heaven, meaning close quarters combat. Perfect for the game mode, shotguns only. But for how cramped it is with multiple choke points here, here, and here, expect to rack up a high kill-death ratio. When a game starts, there are many ways opponents will go, through the metal detector or through this corridor. You just have to get lucky on where the opponents go. Though a popular spot to pass through is the metal detector. It will beep when someone passes through it. It's perfect to let you know when an enemy is approaching, but if you're going through that, prepare for combat at any moment. Even though your knife makes you move faster, keep knifing and equipping to a minimum. One last tip is to use this vent to shoot oncoming enemy, but don't stay there too long as your back is exposed and is an easy kill for that sneaky enemy. A knife kill on this map is extremely difficult, but there is one surefire way of getting a kill on this map, letting the enemy come to you. I know this sounds silly, but in such a closed map like this, it's almost certain death rushing the enemy. If you can bait the enemy to come towards you and hide behind a wall, you are one backstab away from ending that game. Asalto is a map added in the update of all time. It is an additional revamp of an already existing map. Assault. Unlike this predecessors, this map takes place with the trapdoor kill effect takes you. Brazil. Contrary to popular belief, this map plays similar to Assault, only that the train station is less frequently used and the map is slightly bigger. If you rotate like you would on all the Assault maps, you will find an abundance of enemies. With this new map comes new ways to kill players. There are a series of homes along Pare 1 Street where you can jump onto the roofs and somewhat spawn kill out of these two spawns where the warehouse is and where the train station is. There is a small walkway near the train station that you can use to avoid enemies and then kill oncoming enemies. There is also a alley on the back of Pari 1 Street that you can use to flank players in the warehouse. Lastly, you can use this line to walk from the warehouse to the train station 
but isn't too feasible other than to push the enemy from above. By using the roofs and the train station, these can help you on the golden knife to graduate to a win. Beach is a map in Arsenal that was released in the first summer update in 2019. It takes place at a coastal suburban beach with a metro station, with some sort of shacks and gift stores for civilians to purchase an unrealistically tall sandcastle that they can go into. Inside, they can climb the trash to see the sightline of the beach. This map is very popular, so expect to be playing it often. This map is also prone to spawn killing in these places, with usually nowhere to go. One way I highly avoid you take is going over or under the boardwalk, as the enemy team will have high ground and be on the opposite side of the map, leading to an easy kill for them. If you do happen to spawn on the boardwalk, go on top of the infamous shack to secure a kill, go through the sandcastle, though that might be risky for getting spawn killed, or go to the right side of the sandcastle. For spawning near the trans station, you will have free roam on where to go. Going down the hallway could lead you to gain a kill, or being killed, so go into the trans station to minimize your death. The high ground is your friend on this map, and is easy to trap the opposing team on the boardwalk, leading to easy eliminations. Though I do not recommend the high ground near the boardwalk, if you do spawn there, go around and get the high ground above the shops. When it comes to the golden knife, it can be fairly easy for a kill, depending on which side you spawn. Depending on where you spawn, using the train station or flanking in or behind the sandcastle can guide you to a win when the opponent is oblivious. Boulevard is a map released in the Arsenal 2.5 update. It's very large and spacey map that favors long range weapons such as snipers or perfectly accurate weapons. However, it does provide some areas where you can confront enemies in closer range combat. Inaccurate weapons aren't completely useless though. For competitive players, this map is a nightmare with extremely long rotate times and long game durations. But beware of the trolley that periodically enters the map, you will hear a ding when it's entering. If you are hit by it, you will be demoted and lose a level. Game modes like shotguns only and standard can be a challenge for this map and will require lots of flanking. This map can also allow you to corner the enemy team, trapping them in usually the gas station or in the back right of the map. Getting a knife kill in this map can be a challenge, but with granted speed and double jump, you can be fast to flank around the enemy behind Stinky's Coffee or behind these office buildings to get a win. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Coastal is a map added in the Summer Update 3 of Arsenal. It takes place in an anti-coastal town, and I have a strong opinion for this map that the playstyle sucks. But I'll leave you to form your own opinion on coastal, don't take it from me. On the lower half of the map, the chances of you getting spawn killed are high, as you were of course, lower. And the staircase leading up is Spawn Kill City. The best bet is to use another set of stairs further away from the spawn, but beware. Enemies could be lurking and ready to kill you. On Coastal, there are many roofs, and these roofs are perfect for spawn trapping, but it comes with a downside. Be wary of where your teammates are spawning, as the enemy could come up behind you or have a laser focus on you as you have the higher ground and can easily pick players off by using the steep roofs as cover. Most of the action takes place on this patio in the middle. If you don't care about a high kill death ratio and want a ton of kills, this is your best friend. The golden knife in this map can be a challenge based off where you spawn. If you spawn the lower half of the map, your best bet is to flank to that left side like I mentioned earlier, as enemies will likely spawn on the back half of that map. But with how big and open this area is, you may find it difficult to flank around for the kill. I don't play this map often, so if you have any additional comments about this map or any other maps, leave them in the comments. <laughs> Dizzy takes place on top of a tall building undergoing construction. At the top, there are two buildings, orange and blue, separated by a lower tunnel. There are ladders and a large bundle of wood able to be able to be traversed upon. Falling off the map will result in a demotion. Dizzy is one, if not the most popular map in this game. It's easy to memorize, symmetrical, and straightforward. Most action will take place between these two buildings, but can lead to being spawn trapped. And there are ways to combat that. If you like parkour or want to learn it, here's an easy technique for you to use. Use this technique that I'm showing you to get on top of the roof to kill those pesky spawn trappers. Though the 
The basement of the map is often forgotten. It can be used to flank and get several kills. There are a few parkour spots to secure a kill, but a golden knife will take your utmost thought. The underside of the map is a great way to go, as if you go either way, you will face the enemy. The same goes for spawning in the middle, here and here. Very easy to predict spawns, very easy to learn game sense on this map. <laughs> The Storm is an arsenal map which was first added in prior servers on Christmas Update 1. It was on Part 1 for testing, but it was later put in the rotation during Part 2. This map takes place in an isolated town in the middle of a desert, featuring a mosque, markets, and a cliffside. On this map, the high ground is not used as often as you think. Maybe because all high points have little to no cover. No matter how you rotate, you are likely to find players. Under this archway presents a choke point when spawns are adjacent to each other. If you go into this area, you might be able to spawn kill into the back spawn, which is right here. Back there, you're also prone to another spawn kill where you access the roof via a ladder. If you want to combat a player on the roof, use this roof next to it to kill them as you have slightly more cover than they do. Or you can flank around, get onto the roof, and kill them. With spawn kill being a somewhat uncommon occurrence, you shouldn't struggle to find players. With the golden knife, roofs help tremendously when trying to get that golden knife kill because you are higher than other players, meaning you can swoop down on them to get the kill. Moving on the ground and placing yourself behind the enemy will be a huge pain, but as you learn the map, it will get easier. I'm gonna say this a lot, but flanking is your best shot at winning. But remember, it is up to you to learn the map and the spawns so that you can play effectively and get the wins you desire. I'm just providing you info and tips. My boy High Frights takes place in an open-ended map set in a theme park surrounded by a castle at sunrise or at dusk depending on the map theme. Areas mix between long to close range combat with most encounters near the drop tower or the gamer grill stalls. Though there are many high vantage points such as the ferris wheel where players can easily pick you off since your head is showing and you aren't moving, leading to an easy elimination. The dropping machine is somewhat feasible but with little to no cover and it's really hard to get up there. An enemy or two would most likely want to pick you off. The most useful high ground you have here are the roofs. With their steep incline, it can shield you from unsuspecting gunfire. Trees are also useful for getting onto these roofs, as well as jump crouching onto a roof to get to another. Most fights on this map are head-on, so prepare for some mid-range and CQC fights. The golden knife on this map can be somewhat difficult, as flanking is somewhat impossible. As you study the map when you play, look at the ways less traveled by your teammates. Those might grant you a good flank, so you can get a satisfying win. Back down, give up. Hillside takes place in a lakeside park with a cluster of buildings on top of a hill. There are tunnels on both sides of this map to connect the pathways. The terrain is rough outside the buildings, leaving one team to fight up the hill. Opinions on this map from what I've seen are fairly mixed. Mainly one reason why is that there's little to no cover at all, so spawn trapping is inevitable. This map will force you to push to get kills, hanging back will result in you going down the leaderboard. There are multiple ways to get high ground and secure kills on this map. A popular but unused way is this roof. There are two ways to get to this roof. When you get there, you have a almost clear shot of people down the slope and somewhat clear shot of enemies near the back. If you can manipulate this spawn killing height to your advantage, as everyone will want to eliminate you, you can have yourself a low kill death ratio. The hill is a popular and massive choke point, so use it at your own risk and use cover to surprise the enemies near the water. Gain a golden knife on this map can be fairly difficult. Gain on top of the roof and go into this big tree and the boardwalk pass are good ways to secure a win near the front. To eliminate enemy that's located in the back, use your speed and double jump to get onto a roof and secure that kill for a win. I've seen many people try to go head on onto the hill while on the ground and meet the same fate, getting eliminated. Lodgeworks is a map added in the Winterfest update of Arsenal. It takes place during a rainy day at a ski lodge deliberately called The Lodges that is said to be located in, at the Phineas Ridge according to the pavement sign. Now, this map reminds me of my trip to the Hurricane Ridge Lodge, a lodge on top of many mountains in Olympic National Park outside Seattle and Washington. It is also located 
30 minutes outside the logging town of Port Angeles. Sadly, too much after my departure, it tragically burned down in early May of 2023. Oh, Crap, I got sidetracked. My bad. With a fully destructible building, a first of its kind for Arsenal, games such as Projectile Party and Standard will change up the playstyle a little bit. Most of the action takes place in or around the perimeter of the building, so expect to see an enemy or two whilst you flank. The second floor of the map is good for one thing, gain onto the roof. By doing this jump, the roof can give you an advantage, but the time it takes to get there might not be worth it. I've seen the common mistake of sitting here above on the second floor. Floor. You should only be there for a short amount of time, then move on, because with high ground, especially in an enclosed space, you are priority for the enemy to kill. The most common way to flank is at the entrance of the lodge, then making your way in, or going around to either side. Both are good ways to rack up some kills, but if you flank to the ski lift, you may find a bountiful amount of enemies, as most of their focus are on the people inside. On the other side, enemies spawn is facing right towards you. And with that high ground and the possibility of more enemies inside, you get trapped and eliminated. A mostly forgotten way is under this deck which you can use to surprise your enemies. Now for the golden knife on this map, it can be quite difficult to get that backstep if you haven't played this map a lot. If you can maneuver yourself accordingly using the double jump while in the lodge, you can fly over enemies and backstab them. But if you want to flank and not get seen head on, use this tree to get onto the roof and fall from it without the enemy noticing to backstab them. Though this tree can be a bit tricky, but with practice, with or without the golden knife, is a good way to get onto the roof and have that high ground to suppress the enemy. <laughs> Matrix, for most people, needs no introduction. This is the map for the most skilled of players. Small, unrendered, enclosed map, fast rotations, and quick kills, a 1v1 heaven, and a map that is prone to spawn killing in most places. And sadly, there is no place for you to flank to get away. You will have to push to get out of a spawn kill. But if you do get the opportunity to spawn trap, this roof right here is your best friend. One of the highest points in the map, you can crouch to get cover and have a clear shot for all. So you can rack up a ton of kills and secure win just by being on this roof. Though a spot that leaves you highly vulnerable to dying is the second floor of this map and is the highest point in this map. Yes, you have the highest ground, but to secure a kill requires you to be on this platform, then in turn, makes you an easy target for a kill. Your best bet is to rotate down and join in on the chaos. The golden knife in such a fast environment will require you to think quickly and dodge effectively. If you let the enemy come to you, a surprise attack could startle them and grant you a win, or you could push and effectively maneuver around to where an enemy's back is turned to get a victory. Monastery is a revamped map re-released in the update of all time. This takes place in a church or an abandoned church, depending on which map you play, and next to it is a graveyard. This map is known for the Hakua boss battle released in the Halloween Update 2 and was the peak of Arsenal's popularity. This map is considerably large, but it is a fun map to play on. With long corridors and large outside areas, Legacy Competitive thrives in this map. Precision aim is needed to hit enemies from afar, and flanking will most likely guarantee you a kill based on how spread out players are, especially on four teams. Though the roof of the church is so high, you will have a hard time killing people below, and that is difficult and it's difficult to get there in the first place. Your best choice is to constantly flank on this map, as getting stuck in the long corridors without teammates to back you up might result in you being eliminated, though it never hurts to go inside and snag a few kills from time to time. With this being one of the largest maps in the game, depending on enemy placement, it should not be hard to get the golden knife kill. As most players run their guns out, if you can flank accordingly on the outside, you can catch an unsuspecting enemy from behind. <laughs> Midtown is a map that takes place in the downtown of an urban community. The map is a community-made map that was originally available in private servers. This map is rather open, but makes use of elevation and buildings to break sight lines and add areas for play. There are also multiple Akop... Akopai... Akopais? Akopais? What? Okapis. Multiple Okapis to hide and several lamps leading to rooftops. Other than to activate the slaughter event, 
this map is pretty mid, and not a map you'll be playing on often. The high chance for a high kill-death ratio, and like many arsenal maps, most action takes place in the middle. And to get out of the way, this lower area in basketball court, though, is practically useless for any other fling except for the golden knife kill. It will cut down on your action time and might cause you to slip down the leaderboard. There are a few spawn kill points, as well as an overpowered spot to eliminate enemies. I'm not sure what to call this spot, but it gives you a clear shot for this spawn and for enemies spying under the orange awning. Spying under the orange awning could lead to you getting spawn killed, but that is very rare. The most overpowered spot is this balcony here, where you can crouch and snipe kills from either enemy spawn point. Though you do run the risk of getting an explosive or a projectile based weapon, or being run dry of opponents to kill. If enemies have a scoped weapon or have enemy outlines, prepare to move or be killed. You also run into the chance of being flanked from behind. Getting a golden knife kill can be difficult, but also very easy. There is a vent you can pass through the flank to get a kill, or use the lower level in basketball courts like I mentioned earlier to flank enemies. <laughs> Oh my god, just leave the game, bro. It's not worth it. Trust me, bro. Sandtown is from a mobile game called Respawnables and is one of the most favorited maps by skilled and competitive players. A popular spot to kill is under the plane, with a perfect sight into enemy spawn. The two buildings adjacent to the plane are a good way to combat it and are also good for spawn killing. Following your teammates is the best strategy in this map and for any other maps too. If you know they are going towards an enemy, fall slightly behind if your teammate gets picked off so you can finish off the enemies. A good heat map of Sandtown looks like this, so I hope that gives you a hint of where to go. There are a multitude of ways to parkour on this map, so if you want to learn the parkour, I'll leave some videos for you to watch. The golden knife is extremely dangerous on this map. If you weld the knife, your extra abilities give you the ability to jump anywhere. If you don't wield it, be extremely cautious, as they can surprise and kill you in an instant. Safe House takes place in a hilly woodland area with a craftsman style house as the focal point. The map is inspired by the Skewskull map, the underscore Safe House, it has a different layout outside the house. For a new player, Safe House is straightforward. There is a house with a rocky terrain surrounding it. Most players will try to go inside the house and get as many kills as possible, but this could lead little to no kills and a high kill death ratio if there's no teammates backing you up. The second floor of this map is your best bet to flank and get some kills and is the best way to spawn trap. You also have to cover the hide from gunfire. If you do find yourself in a spawn trap, go around the big terrain or go onto the big terrain by eating the trees and then shooting down at the people camping you on the second floor. The roof, on the other hand, is the strongest vantage point and is easy to get onto from the north spawn. And the easiest way to get there is with an explosive because once you're up there, air strikes, bomb them, bomb them, keep bombing them, bomb them again and again. Try to use it to your full potential, but not too often. The south spawn is the worst spawn on this map, and you will have to use explosive if you want to get onto the roof. The reason why it sucks is because this map is on a slope, and you want that north spawn. You can use the stairs inside the house to kill any players coming in, while your teammates will need to push to regain that north spawn. Another option if you don't want to go into the house is to use the planks on the side of the house to have a high vantage point and secure some kills. The golden knife on this map can be a pain, no matter what side the map you're on. Using the roof and trees to drop down someone is the best way to end the game on this map, but flanking behind the big terrain is also an option too, but it just might take a while. Street Corner 2 used to be Street Corner until it was revamped as a Christmas themed map in the Christmas update of 2023, but then was reverted back to a normal map at without snow after the update ended. It takes place on a residential street with two stores across from each other. In the old version, most fights took place in the sewers, which would receive lots of complaints. Street Corner 2 fights are all on the surface. Now, a good way to rack up some kills is by accessing the roofs. From there, you can shoot players from the roof on the other side or all enemies at the bottom. Though, it wouldn't be an arsenal map without some spawn killing. If you situate yourself on this red crate, you can eliminate opponents from the mini mart, the yellow store, I don't know its name, and in this tunnel. Though, this tunnel is where most spawn killing happens. I see a lot of players forget there are two passageways that you can escape from if you are in a spawn kill, but they are rarely used. Sometimes you will spawn down near the sewer. If you spawn inside, 
go this way and hop onto the red roof and shoot players from the adjacent roof or on the ground. If you spawn outside in this weird area amalgamation of crates, try to locate the enemies on the red building as you go up. Once you have done that, go to the spot that I mentioned earlier and scan the area for players. For the golden knife, go around the yellow and red buildings, then use the ladders. You might get lucky if a player is up there. If you know enemies are spying in this tunnel, you can use this passageway to flank behind and get a game winning backstab. Tuscan is based from Tuscan styled homes. Inspired by Italian architecture, Tuscan is a moderately sized urban map and is somewhat asymmetrical and symmetrical that follows a three lane rule. Much like a Counter Strike map, both sides of this map are almost symmetrical with minor differences. Both alleys have the same layout with minor changes. The middle section of this map is filled with a brick road and connected via four alleyways and two interiors. There are many ways to rotate to the center where most of the action is located. Going through the middle is a major choke point and I see many people try and go through, but end up getting eliminated. Though it may take longer, use the two longer ways to flink around and kill the enemies in the middle, or use the roofs, which can take some parkour skills and might deter some players because of that. But once you get up there, be wary. As another player might be on the adjacent roof, the slope makes you an easy kill for players on the bottom. With the golden knife, you can use the roofs to your advantage and jump to the other side of the map, flanking the enemy and getting the win. Overall, games on this map may take a while depending on what game mode and it is a map with mixed opinions. Playstyle can get annoying as you may spend more time on a death screen than you do actively killing players. <laughs> The villa takes place on a large mansion that is located in the middle of the map. The, man the mansion is decorated with furniture and easter eggs. Inside are two staircases, and there is another step outside that is accessible, with an archway leading up to a ramp and a walkway. The mansion takes place on somewhat of a cliff edge, so falling off the edge will result in a demotion. Unlike Sandtown, Villa has more choke points and fewer the places to shoot from, though going through these choke points can sometimes be rewarding, though I recommend you take the roads less traveled. Fighting happens everywhere on this map, so be prepared to get spawn killed in some instances. The roof is a strong vantage point by super jumping or using an explosive. If you learn and time super jumps, you can perform them on maps like Sandtown and Beach. Getting the golden knife is fairly easy on this map if you make your way onto the roof. And for skilled players, trick stabbing and close quarter choke points. <laughs> Now these are all the tips I can give you in the current maps in Arsenal. If you have any tips, leave them down in the comments so other players can learn them too. I hope these tips that I gave you can help you in becoming a better, more aware player, and I hope to see you guys on the battlefield. Thanks for watching, and remember to wear headphones.